Hello, everyone. This is Glazer of the Snap Judgments Podcast, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Today on Snap Take, we have for you two Thanos decks, one with Phoenix that has a 75% win rate in the hands of its creator, Quinn Equinox, phenomenal player, tournament winner. In addition, we have another Thanos deck, no Phoenix, but this one is brand new from Lambi, the best Thanos player in the game, and arguably one of the two to three best players. Not sure what argument counter there would be, but there it is. I keep getting a lot of messages, and a lot of people are going, I'm not buying Phoenix, I'm not buying Phoenix, the card isn't good. Well, I did on Marvel Snap Zone the top five reasons to buy the Rise of the Phoenix season pass. It's worth it. There's five reasons. We're going to look quickly at one, because I think it's important, because people are saying this card isn't good, so I shouldn't buy it. That's a little silly to me. I just want to look at all the other Season Pass cards since Global Release. First was Miles. Miles is at least solid and eventually became an absolute meta card. But this is like at Global Launch, so this isn't exactly what the design philosophy has been for um, Season Pass cards. Then we go to Black Panther. Black Panther is immediately good. Immediately shakes up the meta, immediately makes Cosmo and Shang-Chi meta because his Wong Arnim Zola thing is one of the most powerful things you could do at the time, especially as the opposition was largely Death Wave. Ends up being an absolutely great deck. Why, um, sorry, excuse me. It gets chased from the meta very quickly, but that's not the end of the world. It is a meta deck. Surfer, goes without saying, is absolutely phenomenal. Meta deck, right? It gets nerfed, and it's still one of the top five decks in the game. Zabu, same thing. Best card that they've ever released gets nerfed, one of the top five decks in the game. Modok wasn't powerful as soon as it was released, because like now, there's a little bit of an overpowered meta, but one of the top seven or eight win rate decks in the game has been discard for the past like three or four seasons, and that's thanks to Modok. Without Modok, that deck doesn't work. Season pass card, worth it by the middle of the second month and had stayed worth it for months. Four months. People argue Nimrod is the big one. This is the worst since Nimrod. Nimrod is not worth it. Of course, Nimrod was worth it. Everyone pretends now, but there was immediately a Galactus build that featured Nimrod that was the highest win rate Galactus build. It stayed the highest win rate Galactus until the counters faded out in the last season before Galactus when the regular Galactus caught up to it. But Nimrod was in a top performing regularly infinite deck with the highest win rate. It wasn't bad. And now that it's six power, apparently that one power really does matter because it's in a whole lot of decks, including those with Phoenix. Hitmonkey. Cool. Hitmonkey is going to be nerfed soon, I would betcha. Hitmonkey is absolutely phenomenal. Great card. Again, the second it was released, it wasn't great in the meta that like day because that was the Sandman meta. As soon as Sandman got chased off, Hitmonkey has been in top deck after top deck. After. Next up, Nebula, one of the two or three best one drops. A little overshadowed by Kitty Pride, which everyone got for free. But outside of that, just absolutely phenomenal. Single-handedly brought Lockdown back into the metagame and made it a T1 level deck. Ghost Spider, not the most powerful, again, but in like two or three tournament winning decks this season. Super powerful, crazy strong. What makes you think Phoenix Force is going to be worse than all of these? It's a super flashy ability. It's at worst vision, right? It's a backup plan for Shang-Chi. It works amazingly with Mature. It works amazingly with Surfer. It works amazingly with Move. There's so many homes. This deck is going to be absolutely sick. All right, before we get to the decks, last thing, do me a favor, hit subscribe to this video. Subscribe to my channel. We do two decks every single weekday that stay, keep you ahead of the meta. We're bringing you things that none of the other big creators are talking about yet that can help you get infinite or infinity tickets if that's more your flavor. We're going to get you there. We have succeeded throughout the course of this game, and we're not stopping now. Okay. Oh, sorry. Those of you who are already subbed, I really appreciate you. About 40% of the viewers are subbed. We really appreciate you. That means 60% of you got to step your game up. But the 40% of you are subbed, do me a favor. Hit me with a like and comment. It really helps the YouTube algorithm, makes more people watch the channel, helps us grow. We'd appreciate it. We support you. You support us. That's how it should be, right? Okay. On to Quinny. Oh, that's Lambie. Let's go to Quinny first, and then we'll talk about Lambie. All right. 
we are going to talk about Quinny's deck right now. Quinny's deck is absolutely phenomenal. It is a giant hybrid mishmash of stuff. The two main things it is, is destroy and bounce. The destroy package is fairly obvious. It's your um, Yandu, Carnage, Killmonger, which are, and Shang-Chi, which are in the deck to kill a bunch of stones, to weaken the opponent's cards, and to, in essence, um, make it so that your death is super cheap. Once your death is super cheap, death and kitty pride at the end of the game is absolutely insanely powerful, or death, kitty pride, and devil dinosaur, which is a real thing that happens in this deck fairly often, is just absolutely nuts. It's not hard to draw into these because you have beast and kitty, right? So beast bouncing back stones means you draw so much. And as you're getting that extra energy multiple turns from the time stone, it's just absolutely excellent. Angela's away. If you're running Kitty, you should run Angela just because she gets so powerful in the process. The stones help there too. Space Stone can pull one off. Um, because you're drawing with these stones very often twice, Devil Dino is stellar. Devil Dino is an absolutely amazing card in this deck. And Shang. So we've got the giant, um, the giant hulks of the meta, right? We need a card like Shang to answer them. We can sometimes go above them in one lane. We can always go above them in one lane. Going above them in two lanes is really rough. Um, Killmonger really helps with a lot of the smaller stuff early, but Devil Di you want your uh, Devil Dino or Death or Kitty to be able to stack up and win. Shang lets you do that. The only card in this deck that I'm not completely crazy about is Polaris. She's nice. She's an extra value card, but she's not totally needed. I could see her being Null, I could see her being Venom pretty easily without too much trouble. I think she'd be really good as either one. She also might do well as a Bishop. Polaris is a little bit extra, but whatever. Phoenix's main goal here is that she lets you drop cards early. She lets you drop powerful cards early, and your worst case to playing a Phoenix on uh, turn 5 is a Vision. And when she is a Vision, A, you get to move that 7 power around, or... Uh, nine power i believe yep nine power if it's the power stone she also very often draws a card powering up your devil dino giving you an extra thing to do on the last turn of the game she's a backup plan she's a great backup plan. she basically ensures that you're safe with this deck she says i know what i want to do again polaris is the one card here that i'm not completely sold on everything else this deck is absolutely excellent and runs super smoothly Fair warning. This is Quinny's warning from um, her Twitter. She says, basically, it is the player, not the deck, who wins the game. The deck enables the player, but the player has to win. I've seen a lot of complaints about when I title things like 75, 80% win rate. I'm not saying you will automatically have that win rate. I'm saying this deck in the right hands is capable of that. The 80% win rate deck I posted last time was my win rate with the deck. In the comments, one of our friends Hey, Koto, uh, had an 85% win rate with one of my decks over like 60 games. It's a reasonable sample. Not huge, but reasonable, right? This deck has a 75% win rate in Quinny's hands. It's fantastic. But it's not even, like, as great as this deck is, it's not even my favorite deck of the day. My favorite deck of the day is Lambie's new Thanos Bounce. This deck is so cool. So Lambie had this bounce deck a few seasons ago that ran like Valkyrie, uh, Beast, and basically a lot of these other cards as a way to like basically steal cubes. It would lock down a lane with Spider-Man or Professor X back when Spider-Man costs four, and then Valkyrie or go big with giant cards to win another one. This deck has fundamentally much of the same deck plan, except it also has the insane power potential of Kitty, Angela, and Bishop. It runs best as a way to like improve all those stones, improve your Iron Man, the only card you really don't want to hit, losing the one on Beast isn't that big a deal. The only card you really, really don't want to hit is Thanos, but you're probably eating your stones with something like Carnage. So Thanos is really very unlikely to be turned on. And if he is turned on, he's a 10-13 even with the nuke, which is pretty damn good. Um, if he's not, then you're losing one power by just playing America Chavez. If he's not going to be 6-13, uh, you can just play the 6-9 America Travis in the last turn of the game. She can't be hit by Bast outside of strange circumstances that aren't occurring to me. Okay. 
So early on with this deck, this is going to be my deck of the day over Marvel Snap Zone. You want to get Bast or Kitty down, and you want to play basically an early bounce game. In order to facilitate that, you have the stones. Stones that are all 1-3 are crazy powerful. If you get Blue Marvel down, stones that are all 1-4 are just game. You think about it, you have, um, basically you have three one four one three stones and a um, Blue Marvel in play, right? That's um, 16, once you have four, excuse me, you have 16 power in that lane. That's going to beat a lot of things, right? That's going to beat most of the big stuff in the game. And that's just your stones lane. You still have a lane that you're playing things like Blue Marvel and Iron Man and Kitty Pride and such. You have absolutely no problem with that. You really generally don't want to be playing a six cost card in this deck. Um, you, Thanos and America Chavez are fine, but you kind of want to be playing multiple things. Ideally, Iron Man and Kitty on that last turn. Kitty could also be free, obviously, because Beast is in the deck. You draw, again, like last deck, an absolute ton of stones plus Beast as well. Don't be afraid to bounce back a Bast. And uh, once you've got that, play Bast and then play all your zero stones. All of these things grow your Angela and Bishop to absurd proportions. Jeff is a way to get into... Uh, Carnage is a way to take care of stones when you don't see beasts, so you actually have space on the board. Is he the best thing in the deck? No, but he's more than good enough. You don't want to. You don't always want to play Blue Marvel, so turning those um or and you don't always see past right. So turning one ones into a two eight is a solid play. Jeff is the only card that's at all questionable here. Really good with Angela. Really good at getting to strange lanes. That could easily be either Spider-Ham or Shang-Chi. Those are my two main suggestions for changing Jeff. If you have Spider-Ham, Spider-Ham. Or if you feel like you're getting beat by big things. I did not feel that way. Shang-Chi is great. Um, if you can steal a lane with Professor X, your Iron Man Kitty shenanigans, you can pile, pile, pile in one lane like no one else. Also, don't be afraid to, on four or five, Professor X a bishop lane, because that bishop grows so much from all the stones, the bounce, and the growing, that it usually ends up big enough to win that lane, even if it didn't look immediately like it was going to. Am I missing any cards here? Iron Man's a power amplifier, Blue Marvel's a power amplifier, Thanos comes with stones, and America Chavez is consistency. That's this whole deck. If you want a full written-up breakdown, um, a couple hours after this video goes live over a Marvel Snap Zone that exists. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, sub, comment. Sub if you haven't yet. Come on. You watch this whole video. Like and comment. Help me out. And finally, check us out on Marvel Snap Zone. We also have the podcast over on their YouTube featuring the great Drew Barry and the nerd Nerf Herder. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow for another Snap Take. Peace.